I think that's what makes me different um, as a 24 year old or back then even as a 21 year old. I guess I just wasn't really into the young 20s type of stereotypical scene um, and that's how I kind of had the mindset to want to get my own house and do the things that I'm doing now. I just had the ambitions to, I guess, want more. If you ask Makani, uh, or I guess my mom too, like when I was 18, I kind of had everything planned out. Like I had my goals set and what I wanted them done by. I wanted to be married by like 2021, 2022. <laughs> and I knew I wanted a house or at least have my own space within that same year too. So, yeah, so I don't know. You well, definitely, uh, you know, accomplished a lot yeah. of things that more than a lot of 21 year olds and 24 year olds, yeah. you know, strive to, to look up. So you're definitely an inspiration for others that, you know, that's out there. What's up, gangy? Welcome to Puka Pockets. I'm your host, Fuzzy Jardine. For you, my Hawaii people, let's go. Come follow this journey and learn financial education and watch the people that we bring on this show to educate you financially so that you can put money back into your pockets. Aloha. Hello again, again. Welcome to Puka Pockets Podcast. My special guest today is my daughter, and her name is Lily Noy. Super proud of this Wahine. We want to share her journey. I met her when I first met my wife, and this was like in 2012. I was in the hospital. I got hurt, and, you know, I met her mom on social media. <laughs> I was on, a, on a, a site, but, you know, when I met Lily Noy, she was, I think she was in seventh or eighth grade. And, uh, yeah, just stoked to have her here on the show, kind of share her journey um as a young woman call her uh wahine boss <laughs> she uh Im impressed me by you know her journey as as a young woman or young wahine in hawaii uh, going through you know her adolescence into her teenager years and then into college and then you know becoming a homeowner so Noi, welcome to the show. Hello. <laughs> you can Happy look at me instead here. of the camera. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, you know, just relax. Nice shoes, by the way. Thanks. Me and mom went shopping in Vegas. Uh, no. Yeah. So. I should just tell, introduce myself. Yeah, I mean, tell the audience, right. you know, uh, well, who you are and, you know, yeah, where um, you're from. My name is Illinois. I'm from Nanakuli. Um. <laughs> Uncle Kalaya is my stepdad. Knew him for about 12 years now. Um, yeah. One of the closest things or relationships I have uh, with my father figure. So pretty lucky. Um, yeah, we could talk about, I guess, growing up. I started from, I guess, freshman year at 0, 0.0. Now I guess I'm pretty successful for a 24-year-old. <laughs> yes, you so, are. Uh, yeah. Zero point zero. Talk about yeah, that. Zero what was, point what zero. Was, why uh, was that? <laughs> yeah, freshman year. I just was going through it. Uh, yeah. Got in with the wrong crowd. Mm -hmm. Wasn't going to school. Um, yeah, it wasn't until I got out of that environment and mom transferred me to another high school where I started like focusing on myself and getting better yeah. as an individual. So you know, going to like when we met. You know, I mean, I know. You know the meeting someone that mom right yes um that mom started liking which was yes. i don't know yeah why me but <laughs> hey i guess i got doing, blessed you're right doing really great <laughs> and um i think the first time i met you and your brother was at the uh, cpk was, yeah you guys uh it was kind of like a date night family date night when we first was introduced to you at cpk and then fun fact you after right yeah so that was when you guys was able to like drill me with all the questions uh, yeah a little bit <laughs> figure yeah. me out who's this guy <laughs> yeah uh, and then um it was i don't really remember our first interaction i think one thing i remember from meeting you the first time was we were walking out of fun factory and there was a like a toy monkey in a tree in the parking lot and i was like oh i want to grab it and you're like yeah go so i climbed on the truck that was next <laughs> to the tree thinking it was yours 
And I got up there, and mom started yelling at me, and I was like, why? I'm going to go on uncle's truck to grab the monkey. And she was like, that's not his truck. <laughs> and then you have a bus out station wagon <laughs> in the parking lot waiting for us. But yeah. That is classic. Yeah. yeah. I always had bus up cars, right? No, yeah. But hey, it worked out. Yeah. Yeah. It got us to where we needed to go. And now we got better vehicles today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, a little bit better still. Yeah, a little bit better. Used cars, but. Brand used. You know, brand <laughs> used is what we call it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so tell me, you know, the transition. Because I, when I met you guys, you guys were in, in um, Kapolei, right? Yeah. Living so everything Kapolei. was still pretty new uh, when you entered our life, too. Like, we were still getting used to our lifestyle with divorced parents and then moving to a new city. Um, so adding you in the mix was a little overwhelming, I think. No. Just being growing up in that state or environment of uh, our family situation was overwhelming in itself. But um, when we moved, I think I was just a little bit lost. Like I didn't really know who my friends were, and I didn't really know like how to interact with my mom and whatever. Um, but as I got older, especially like high school and then out of high school into my adulthood, um, just speaking to everybody um, in our family is a lot easier, I think, yeah. navigating it all. You got older, you know, and you yes. made all your mistakes, right? Yeah. <laughs> After getting through the mess, it's a lot easier. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was, when, you know, looking into meeting you guys, because I, I grew up as a stepchild as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was a little bit challenging because... My stepdad, you know, he put a roof over our, our head as well, but just the relationship that we had was a little bit different. It wasn't like, um, you know, I just say it was just challenging for me because I was like three years old, I think, when my mom, you know, met my stepdad. And I just, it was just, I didn't want it to happen, <laughs> right? And um yeah, I guess I had a little bit more challenging, but what I what I noticed when I met you and you and Makoa was that you guys were very respectful, really good kids. So, you know, kudos to your your you know parents, your mom and and your dad, and, and I believe so, your grandparents, right? Yeah. Your, your dad's parents, yeah. which raised you you guys really well, um, and super blessed to have. You, you and Makoa as uh, respectful f children um, when I became part of the, the family because uh, I became an instant dad, yes, right? Yes, yes, um, you did. Kiara wasn't there yet, um, yep. when you guys were, when I met you guys, so uh, she just was an addition after all. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you were a pretty great instant dad. I yeah. mean, we didn't, like, have that instant relationship, though, you know? Uh, when you came into our lives and then when things started to get more serious and even though we didn't have that relationship where I like I could come and talk to you about anything you really took care of us from the start you know um, when I was a teenager like you helped teach me how to drive you basically got me my first car <laughs> um, you taught us how to take care of the things that you brought home to us and um, then you got you and mom brought home a sister to us, so that was great. <laughs> yeah, no, and you know when we, we, uh, mom and and me, you know we wanted to put a, our own, uh, get our own roof over our head, right? Mm -hmm. And and that that was one of our things after we met was searching for. I think it was a year later because I met mom two thousand and twelve, and shoot i think in 2013 yeah. or 14 is yeah, when we got our house fast. um and it was a homestead stead property and, and i'm kind of excited because bringing you on you've experienced the the homestead process yeah. and, and not you know waiting on a list right yeah. and that's where a lot of people has a misunderstanding um when you get on when you get on the list you, you know you don't have to wait yeah Right, yeah. and that's kind of what I wanted to talk about. Besides, you know, you what was the process of you going to school? Because you graduated high school, mm -hmm. and then what? Well, like you were, what is that? The only one that the first right. out of the kids went yes. to college. Yeah, first, <laughs> and then and I think the first in my family. Um, I would be a first generational college student in my family on both sides. I want to say, 
Um, so right after high school, I did the thing where you get into college, you leave. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, remember I this. came back. <laughs> But I guess during that time, like, my mindset was like, oh, this is the typical thing you do. Like, you got to go off to college. You got to leave the island. Um, and I really thought I was going to stick it out. I was going to go there. Uh, but I got really homesick. And I felt like I wasn't as independent as I was at home than when I was up there. Like, I just couldn't seem to find my bearings and get out into the world up there. But when I was home, like... I could drive around, I was working, I didn't need to ask for help all the time, but when I was up there, I would be calling home like every day <laughs> to see what was going on. But, um, so what was the process? Cause you, yeah. like mom, your, your dad and your mom, like really didn't pay for the right. schooling, right? Yes. So how did you figure out, um, um, you know, to share with, you know, the younger generation, yeah, you know, course. looking to pay for their own s school because you did it, yes. right? So I ended up getting paid to go to school instead of having to pay out of pocket, which is pretty great. Um, my first year, uh, I ended up taking out like $3,400 in student loans. And then as I continued schooling, I got scholarships to cover and then pay off my loans. And then I pocketed like at least twelve grand. But um, in order to do that, <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. They allow you to do that. So they allow you to stack your... Um, your scholarships and then they refund you the amount back if it pays for more so you can use that towards like whatever i use it to like traveling and then um like new laptops and things for school anyway you mean a, a lot of disneyland trips yeah that too <laughs> yeah i used it yep. my first uh big spend was uh my 2020 japan trip mm -hmm. but um yeah so in order for me to get those scholarships like you apply for the financial aid that took care of at least 30% of my schooling. And then going out into um, like Kamehameha Schools mm -hmm. and Pauwahi Foundation. Um, and then private companies also offer scholarships. So during that time, like my first two years of college, I knew I wanted to be or I thought I wanted to be a journalist and into the news um, world. So I think it was called... Um, Hawaii Broadcast Association, like, I think they just really need to get rid of a lot of money towards the ending of, like, the year mm -hmm. when it comes out. So when they called me for an interview, it was, like, quick, three questions. I think it was, <laughs> like, what do you want to do? Where are you going to school? And then, like, even if I wasn't taking the right classes to be considered, like, in journalism at the time, they are like, but are you interested in it? And that was it. They gave wow. me the money. Yeah. So they just wrote you a check. Like, yeah. Here like you go. most companies, I think, or private um, foundations or whatever, really just need to get rid of money by the end of a certain time of the year. Right. Because so they, they get a lot of a certain amount to give away to. Yes. to uh, yeah. Or it just like disappears. You know, oh, it goes yeah. back to whoever they're getting the money from. Right. So yeah. it's better for them to just give it away to students. Yes. That, you any know, students who are even just interested, like even if you're not taking the right classes to do it. Right, so I mean, what like so you wanted to be journal going into journalism? What what was the change though? I mean, when you came home? Yeah, I think it was like f my first year in journalism. I was taking it in um, Azusa Pacific University. Um, I was the only like Pacific Islander in the journalism classes, so I didn't really feel comfortable, and like the way I spoke about things was totally different. So I just lost the passion for journalism and then up until maybe my third year of college I jumped between six major changes um, I was interested in um, education I wanted to become a teacher then English I just wanted to write and then by the end of it I think I chose like business management because I was running out of time <laughs> <laughs> but you go you also doing right now substitute teacher as well right yes um, so in addition to my job as a flight attendant i um substitute teach on the side when i'm not flying or just when i know i have time to go in yeah at my old high school so it's pretty convenient it's nice. two streets away nice yeah. yeah so i mean talk about that too like how did you you know manage to land a job with with hawaiian yes. airlines yes um because I know how right. hard it is. Yeah, to, to it's get really in. hard. I really don't know what the it factor is. Because <laughs> <laughs> I see some like people in the streets who have tried, and I'm like, you'd be a great flight attendant, and like right. they just don't get it. And I don't know. 
it's really just the luck of the draw and like mm. who you have that day and what things you say mm. um but i consider myself really lucky yeah, um, i feel lucky too cause yes, I, <laughs> yes we all get to travel you know yeah um, i get to fly with mom so it's it's yeah. definitely a blessing to save money uh when we travel because mm -hmm. it's yeah. it's free <laughs> yeah and then getting to grow up being able to travel too like i don't think i ever want to lose that um privilege you know right. yeah so crazy so where have you traveled like to? um i have been international to japan australia new zealand mexico and then a bunch of the states which you know i can always go back there it's kind of right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and then i'm going to japan tomorrow so oh, that'll gosh, be fun that's right you are yep and for a long time too yeah right? for two weeks you yeah. should buy a house up there too i know maybe <laughs> when we retire <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um what's left with with school i think you have like yes i have one semester left i took a two and a half year break because <laughs> during that year where i decided to take a break i was getting married wow. we were in the process of buying our house and then the renovations just were taking too much of my time and money mm -hmm. and like everything i just decided to put pause on school and then after the house i decided to do hawaiian airlines so that just prolonged my break <laughs> so now so you yeah, think when you think you're gonna finish um finish. i'm gonna restart again in the fall i just got my readmission acceptance letter from what's the you're shooting for a bachelor's in in business admin now yeah Cool. A more general, broad degree. So and I what, can, more scholarships? 12 grand coming ooh, in your pocket? I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I'm a non-traditional student now, so we, we'll see how much more money I can right, get. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, talk about the process. Like, I know you, man, it's so crazy. You were 21 yes. when you, yeah. you know, Bought purchased your first home. Like, mm -hmm. like, how crazy is that? Yeah. So, you're like, like yeah. when I was 21... Shoot, I was somewhere else that I was, you know, locked up. But anyway, yes, yeah. <laughs> my mindset was, you know, as a as a young, to to own a house at mm -hmm. twenty one is just yeah. I'm I'm thrilled to hear, um, the the process. What was your mindset? Mm -hmm. Um, I know I know we we did help mom and yes, mom and I helped you, but you know the vision was there to, mm -hmm. to be able to you know put a roof over your your head by yourself really I yeah, mean, yeah. Kinda, now i'm right? doing it on my own yes <laughs> yeah. yeah when you guys helped me get the um gears going but now i'm like doing what every other hawaii homeowner does paying their bills working hard <laughs> but um i guess the whole house buying and hunting process i think it started for me in about 2020 um i had some family situations going on with where we were living and that really just pushed me and makani my husband uh, to get our own place. Um, and I think we started looking in about April of 2020 at some properties and we were almost going to buy that apartment in Helua right. with 90 grand. Right. That would be a steal these days. <laughs> right. I would take it, I think. But um, yeah, yeah, it was definitely yeah. not that expensive, right? Yeah, and it was man, so cheap. I should have jumped yeah, on that. Yeah, we should have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then... um. After thinking about it with Makani, we were like, oh, we wanna, if we're gonna lock into a mortgage, we want something that we're gonna love. So we right. let go of that property. We we're looking at houses and properties in Y9, Nan mm. I think all summer, and we just couldn't find anything. But luckily, Chance, Chance Nell, our um, agent, um, he was the seller's agent for our house now and also our agent. So before it went back on the market, he was able to contact us and, um, yeah that's how we got our house pretty quickly right um i think we went into escrow about october of 2020 and then we closed in june of 2021 um and then it took about three months to fix up after that about september we uh we moved in so roughly 11 months to a year right from start to finish of the escrow to move in right so it's a homestead property you live like right above us right yes. so talk about that process because not too much people know that you know even though it was on the list for a very mm -hmm. long time or even if you're not on the list yet right as you, long as you qualify at 50 percent 
you can buy any homestead property. Right. So buy yeah. a lease off someone. Yes. Right. So I was just talking to somebody about it, like on the plane, like an older flight attendant. She was like, you have your own Hawaiian homestead? I said, yes. She was like, how did you get one? I was like, you can buy your, the lease off with somebody. Like right. You don't have to wait around. Like if people don't want that property or don't want to stay in the lease, they can sell it to you. Um, yeah. So we we're really lucky because we bought at the perfect time really because right. once 2021 hit right before covid yes right? <laughs> like that weird spot in covid where people were starting to go back out like the interest rates skyrocketed so After, we yeah. yeah so we got our steal of our fixer upper <laughs> four bedroom two bath at one hundred seventy thousand, and then we put in one hundred thirty five thousand to fix it all up where'd and, you get all that yeah. money from though so like yes. the, what kind of loan what was the loan process um, like purchasing right i know yeah. we mom and i put up the down payment yep. to help you and then she co-signed right yes yeah so finding a lender was probably the trickiest part um i think we had two options the usda first time home buyer zero percent down or we had the home street bank um fha 203k loan and we went with that one because the FHA 203K loan covers the purchase price and then it covers the renovations, right. like what you wanted done. Um, and then you only needed to put up 3.5%. And yes, you guys helped us with that. Uh, just anybody out there, don't be afraid to ask for help or accept <laughs> yeah. help. Oh, well, she's not afraid to ask. <laughs> yeah, I'm not afraid to ask. You don't ask, you don't receive. Okay? <laughs> but um, yeah, you guys helped us out and then we were able to pay you back. I think like during that process too. So um, once okay. we got that loan, it took about three months from getting like the monies to cover, um, and then paying folks back. So right, and then like the construction process was kind of challenging. Yes. Um, because I think the contractor mm -hmm. I was. He was one of my friends. Mahalo to all the contractors yes. and Thanks you so know much. family and friends who who helped out like throughout the whole process mm -hmm. <laughs> i know you broke down a few yeah. times <laughs> like sweat and tears literally <laughs> she actually uh, was scraping the popcorn ceiling with you know yeah we had a popcorn ceiling party <laughs> we got down and dirty to do my house right yeah. and you know stripped down the walls mm -hmm. and painting made it just like yeah. how you wanted it um you know and your your auntie came right mm -hmm. Yeah, hey, everybody uncle, pretty like, much put hands into this house right. for us uh, <laughs> to make it our home today. Yeah. But um, yeah, the renovation process was not easy, I want to say. Um, like, I, me and my husband literally had to be there all the time. Like, if you guys weren't there, we had to be there or, or nothing was going to get done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, oh, but yeah. Um, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't too bad now that i look back at it but it felt like those three months were a year <laughs> yeah, i know it was it was fast though i mean yeah after, compared to other um builds it was right. pretty quick but the the lengthy how long was it to for you guys to close because there i know that house was on the market like four, to, four yes. times or so something it like went that? on and off the market because like i guess buyers kept on um not qualifying for their loans like falling out of their uh, loans because they either lost their jobs or they couldn't put up the money or something something like that but um when it came back on the market or before it got back on the market that last time before we scored it that's when uh, chance was able to contact us um and then yeah we got it basically before he put it back on right i remember because there was a few things that me and Makani had to do yes yeah, yeah. to uh, be able to close on it because I think that was a, it either a, was it was it the bank required us to go find the the cesspool the cesspool yes yeah. me and Makani in the hot sun right before we get married what yeah you <laughs> yeah not then he got a perfect sunburn for our wedding it was perfect yep but he showed up we we made it happen and you know yeah so make so, sure we got that house so stoked that you know to see you you know with your own house and then now you got two horses that live yeah. over there <laughs> yeah those are our children two big great dames yeah. yeah they definitely cost 
probably the same amount as children. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. Yeah. So, so what's next, Lily? No, I mean, I, know I you don't. Get the, know. We're got just married. traveling right now. You got, the, <laughs> you got the house. Yeah, mom really wants to be a grandma, oh, but she's gosh, just gonna have no, to wait. No, title tubes are in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, I think it's cruising. I like as uh, I think that's what makes me different. Um, as a 24 year old or back then even as a 21 year old i guess i just wasn't really into the young 20s type of stereotypical scene um, and that's how i kind of had the mindset to want to get my own house and do the things that i'm doing now um i just had the ambitions to i guess want more and then if you ask McCunny, uh, or i guess my mom too like when i was 18 i kind of had everything planned out like i had my goal was set and what I wanted them done by. I wanted to be married by like 2021, 2022. <laughs> and I knew I wanted a house or at least have my own space within that same year too. So, yeah, so I don't know. You well, don't definitely, know uh, you know, accomplished a lot yeah. of things that uh, more than a lot of 21-year-olds and 24-year-olds, yeah. you know, strive to, to look up. So you're definitely an inspiration for others that, you know, that's out there. And you know, young a young woman, especially from you know coming the West Side. You know, talk about yeah. that. Yes, like not yeah. a coolie girl. Yeah, like, coming from the it? West Side, um, not a lot of people would <laughs> think I come from the West Side. Actually, just because like the way I talk or something, they have this picture in their head like not a coolie people are just super monk, but we're not. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> we're not too bad. <laughs> Yeah, I think it was because um, I was raised, I guess, my preteen years, I was in Kapolei. So I was surrounded by more than just, like, right. non-coolie locals and stuff. I was surrounded by, like, um, uh, like Waipahu people and Ever Beach and Kapolei people and, like, military people, too. So, yeah. Yeah, so did you, are you, did you, like, paddle? Like, what, what was Yes, the, like um, growing up to keep myself busy, I was a... Uh, paddling i was into track a lot so i used to run a lot like i used to run north south road when we were living in Kapolei, um cross country um yeah i wasn't really into team sports because i'm not that coordinated but if you give me one goal i can do it <laughs> <laughs> yeah so talk about your brother i mean you know he's yes i'm he's, so uh, proud of him baby brother yeah. well yeah. He's my baby brother. Uh, we and weren't then, that close growing up. Like, I think with our age gap, we just, I at least, kind of just looked at him like he was pest until maybe <laughs> he was 15, 16, wherein he could understand, like, our feelings and what was going on in life. Uh, now, like, yeah, he's my baby brother, and I would do anything for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he's he's um, right now in, in Ohio, in of Ohio. all places, right? yes. But, and like him too like he's got a free ride from from volleyball yeah. so crazy so yeah so proud of him proud of proud of McCaw. yeah trying to steer him in the right direction <laughs> like how to apply for scholarships right. and whatnot um i just don't want him to have to pay anything out of pocket yeah yeah i know when we went up there it was like freezing cold like yes yeah he's in all weather types <laughs> I just don't understand how he couldn't pick somewhere that wow. we fly. <laughs> I mean, a free over, yeah, free over paying for school. You know, yeah. it, he uh, definitely chose something that he loves to do. You know, mm -hmm. um, his passion was volleyball. We never thought he'd be a <clears throat> volleyball player. Yeah, but he's sure good at it. Yeah. Yeah. He, he he definitely won like championships. Yep, national titles. Right. Yeah. Uh, doing pretty great so you know kiara came into our lives yeah. in 2015 mm -hmm. like your baby sister <laughs> yes my baby sister we all yeah. were at the hospital together like yeah. you know we were there in the room <laughs> yeah what do you think about kiara and where you know like knowing her like her personality like where do you see your little sister going like <laughs> I don't know. she's just so different she's definitely way more outgoing than i was at her age 
she's not afraid to talk to people which i was and um she's into different sports she's definitely into some expensive sports oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but i think she's gonna do great yeah. i'm not too sure what she's gonna do in her life she wants to do a bunch of different things right i know but she's gonna do great in whatever she chooses i know she, she's talking about becoming a uh social media was uh, a youtuber yes. yeah she <laughs> wants to do all the things yeah. she's definitely dressing in the part now though. Oh, yeah. yeah she's into a, a k-pop style or emo <laughs> looking style with like cargo pants and like the hair up with a little bit of curl <laughs> yeah but so, yeah so i noticed like you have this um i don't know if you call it infatuation with these korean band <sighs> like oh my yes. gosh <laughs> you kidding? Like, what? Yes, yeah. Like, so I think they make me feel like I'm more in my 20s than ever before. Um, I just got into BTS. These are the Korean men he's talking about. <laughs> I just got into BTS in April of last year. And so I haven't even been a fan for like over a year yet. And I've seen five of their members. <laughs> and I've been to three concerts in the past how many months is this 10 months oh gosh yeah and i've i've been to korea four times <laughs> i mean what is it like what is it it's i don't like know korean they badly. just they just uh they just bring you in you just watch videos they make so much content i think during covid it was the best time for them because they mm -hmm. put out so much content for everybody to watch at home and people just fell in love with them <laughs> oh, like i think it did. was i did it was like an instant <laughs> like i think Three days of watching videos of them, and I just was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. They could take all my money. <laughs> <laughs> That's classic. So yeah. one thing about I noticed when we travel to, mm -hmm. to Disneyland, and this is what you can share to other people that, you know, don't want to stand in lines. Because when, when we go to Disneyland, for some reason, you figured out yeah. the niche to be able to, like, go into the front of yeah. the line. Like, talk to, talk to us we about it. We go at rope drop, okay? You just have to wake up early and go. Um, so we go to the big rides first, knock those out of the park. Then we'll get the genie pass. And then once you uh, go on your first genie, most of the time you can uh, get the fast pass for the next rides. So if once you set yourself up like that, you're pretty good. Now I see you like doing trades and stuff that like, people can do trades on there or like um, no you just have to watch because sometimes people will cancel and you just have to grab it before other people grab it uh, yeah it's a lot of technical things <laughs> now these days there's no running across the park anymore oh my gosh. you guys can have disneyland yes oh my gosh. yeah no i think after bts has come into my life disneyland has come like Second it went place. down <laughs> it went down a little bit i usually go at least like five six seven times a year but last year I only went two times right yeah right. yeah yeah i can't go as much as i did before because i got bills now <laughs> or oh, you made bills yeah with I made the dogs bills now. <laughs> yeah so what is one memorable moment you know that you know affected you whether it's good or bad you know that you can share or you'd like to share um, i don't know change your mindset or i think when i was going to disneyland a lot and makani and his brother knows this like um so my oldest brother-in-law kanoa he's uh makani's oldest brother he always used to be like you guys should save your money for a house like what you don't have to travel and go to disneyland as often as you do and i i think he was a uh, we were, me and Makani were about like 18, 19 when he first told us this. And we were content living in our one bedroom studio <laughs> with uh, my in laws. And we never really thought like of how to start and get there. But he told us that one day. And we were just like, maybe he's right. And that kind of uh, triggered us <laughs> to plan age. ahead. Right. Yeah. And start saving our money. Uh, what's one thing you can share with the audience? Um, you know, as a youngster, like in your early ages, you know, to be able to, you know, shoot on your own house. Yeah. Like. I mean, I guess I would say surround yourself with like-minded people mm -hmm. um, or just 
take yourself out of any bad situation or take yourself away from people that just aren't going to help you get anywhere you know um when i was 21 i didn't really have that many friends um and that was pretty much by choice like i just didn't want to go out and into the scene like everybody else um like i had one friend and luckily like this friend can attest to like being surrounded by like-minded people because she has a house too and we're the same age right um but yeah surround yourself with like-minded people that like have the same goals and ambitions as you and go with that (laughs) yeah don't be around people that bring you down or take you in the opposite direction of your goals well you're a testament to you know prove that it can be done Mm -hmm. you know even at at a younger age and with with social media and all these like you can learn what anything and and the people that you look up to or want to be like you know there's there's coaches and Mm -hmm. stuff like that so yeah there's you (laughs) there's mom yeah so our next uh we'll see if we can get into it our next thing is going to be our wholesale real estate (laughs) that you're you've uh, gotten mom into so i think i'm going to be her partner and we'll see how that goes for us this year yeah i mean wholesaling you know is is another strategy that people Mm -hmm. use that you don't have to have your own money right you go out you find the deals you build relationships with uh, real estate agents and um or people who are interested in selling their property lock it up and then you assign yeah. it to <coughs> sign it to someone that's interested in you know buying yeah. it from you will and, be the middleman and make a fee right yes so yeah. stoked to see that journey <laughs> yeah me too <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, you guys, you know, both of you just need to take action. Mm-hmm. You know, um, the coaching program that you guys, you know, we we got is definitely um, there to guide you in the right direction. Yeah. <clears throat> and the only reason why I think I, you know, told mom was like, you know, you're always talking about you want to make mm-hmm. extra money. You want to make extra money, you know she's been super supportive with me on on my journey and you know the backbone of you know what's been happening yeah but we did we do knock heads a lot you know i mean we knock heads because you know i'm I'm a one track one track mind person once i set my my mind to do something i i, I do it and uh been super successful doing this this business as far as you know building brand new houses for local families um but i think now that if sh- you and her can you know, learn out. that strategy yeah. right you guys can make your uh extra money and then you know hopefully one day like not hopefully but one day yeah one day like we'll speak it to existence like like maybe no need hawaiian airlines no more you yeah. know <laughs> yeah we'll uh, keep it though because we like the flight benefit <laughs> <laughs> i know you guys just have to go on like low time it's so crazy yeah. So we have so many do. options. The job is just amazing. And I don't think it, I would want to let it go. But then yeah. even if you work for like 10 years, I think after 10 years, you, re- you can retire mm-hmm. and then um, still get the benefits. Yeah. But, you you know, when you fly standby, you're going to be like. Yeah. We want to keep it up there. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Standby life is not fun when. No, it's not fun airplane. when it's tight. <laughs> but it's great when it's wide open. Yeah. <laughs> get your own first class yes yeah Yeah. so i don't know share one passage or one thing that you can share to youngster out there that you know that you can maybe inspire i don't know some (laughs) one-liner like um you can do it (laughs) (laughs) if i can do it you can do it yeah well thank you for coming on the (laughs) puka pockets yeah. podcast um really appreciate you being such a good daughter Thank you. um and look forward to your success and uh i'll see you at home yeah, <laughs> <see you. laughs> so liliana where um where can people find you uh, like you can find me on the airplane <laughs> or <laughs> on instagram um lilinoy.kp right just to follow along on my personal adventures. I post some um, really cool travel reels. 
yeah. There you go. Have, there you have it. Instagram yeah, and you. TikTok, yeah? You did. TikTok, Not I haven't much. been that active. But if you want to see our um, house building and renovation process, uh, keeping up with the KPs on TikTok. Yes. Uh, uh, Malu for coming on the show. Which, If you like this show, please share, like, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Yeah. Aloha. Hey, if you're local and you enjoyed this show, please follow my other social media platforms called Puka Pockets. And please share, like, comment, and we'll see you on the next one.